There was so much rain, the place was flooded, so it was cancelled. And when the following year she called me again, and that's when we came to do that special service for son. But when I got the call recently, yeah, I, I wasn't sure which which was that called me. I think it was the person that was just speaking, yes. Um, where it, Sasha, is there, where Sasha called me and told me that um, when he passed away, I, I really couldn't believe it. You know, sometimes you hear something and it's like it's not really real. And, you know, my condolences to the family today. This is not a simple day. It's not an easy day. Saying a final goodbye to a loved one is never easy. As a matter of fact, you could lose a job and get a better job. You could lose a car and get a better car. You could lose a house and get a better house. But when you lose a loved one, nothing could replace that person. So the pain is so great. Sometimes you wish you could say a prayer and, you, and you're okay again. But this takes years. I mean, every time you remember that person, you shed a tear. And sometimes people wonder why you're so you know, heavy and sad, whatever. You just got the memory of losing that person. There's always pain and sorrow. So today, you know, we, we know that it's not an easy day. And, uh, you know, we want to just, we want to pray. Father, today we give you thanks. For you are God. You are almighty God. You are the giver of the gift of life. And my God, we live unto you and even we die unto you, O oh God. And today we commit this service into your hands. I commit the family, O oh God. This is not an easy day. And Jesus wept at the graveside of Lazarus, my God, knowing and signifying that you are God and you know the pain and sorrow that goes along with death. And in this homegoing service for our sister Kemraji, Kemraj, 
known as Jamie, we invite your presence, oh God, that you would touch every heart, you would touch every life. And even as we reflect on the time and the season that she was among us, oh God, we know that this is the house where she used to live. She's not here. She has already gone to be with the Lord. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, Father, we commit even the little ones into your hands. We ask that your spirit would give us courage and strength. And, Father, that you, Lord God, keep this family in the palm of your hands. We are praying that even at the, a time like this, they would draw closer to each other so that they can actually hold each other's hand, lean on each other. So many times the devil tries to bring a, a, a schism and ism between families so that the closeness is not there. Sometimes it goes as far as this one is not speaking to that one. I'm praying that all the, the petty things that we hold on to, we would let go and let us embrace each other and come together in love and comfort each other in a time like this. Father, we commit this service into your hands as we sing a couple of songs and share your word. Lord, that your spirit would move among us and bless every person here today. Give courage and strength. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right, feel free to stand. Let's, we're just going to sing one, maybe one or two choruses as we usually do in funerals. Now, let me say this. Eh? The midst of the pain and sorrow, there's a sense of victory. All right? The Bible says if you believe that the person knew Jesus, the name of the Lord, <coughs> you don't have to do anything spectacular, build a house with somebody and, 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 or become a preacher. No, no, nothing like that. The Bible says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You read the Bible, the thief on the cross just simply said to the Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. If the thief made it, we could make it. It shows the love of God for everybody. If the worst, you know, thief is real, I mean, murderers and thieves are really terrible. And if God just told him, just for saying, just for asking, today you will be with me in paradise. I'm saying every one of us can make heaven our home today. Amen? Amen. 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 No, we have a singer here, you know. You can't, you can't say you're not singing, you know. <laughs> the last time we were here, she sing up a storm time. No, we have a singer here. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, we give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. We give you thanks, O oh God, because you are God. You are the giver of the gift of life. You, my God, keep us in the land of the living. And when we leave, my God, as long as we are pleasing in your sight, we go towards you, O oh God. We go towards you. And Father, we just give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise and we give you thanks. We honor you today. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. We just want to sing one final song before we move on with the program today. A song of thanksgiving to God. God truly is a mighty God, eh? And we want to thank God for the season and the time that Jamie walked among us. After today, you would not see her walking and talking and laughing. You'll just be able to have memories in your heart of the times and seasons that you share. I know a young person like this, you know, there's a saying, gone too soon. People debate that all the time. They say God has a time for everyone and that's settled. You know, we don't live by luck and chance. But when a person this young and this nice, a beautiful young person leaves, it is too soon. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. I just want Thank you, Lord. Everything give thanks. It's not always easy, but in everything you said to give thanks. You may be seated today in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we want to invite the members of the family who's going to do the eulogy at this point in time. We want to invite you all to come and tell us some things about the life of Jamie and share with us some of the precious memories of Jamie. Yeah, sure. Come on, let's give a hand clap as they come. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kavita, aka Scooby. <laughs> I'm the eldest out of the four children that mommy and daddy had. As you all know, we have been here less than a year ago for my brother Sean's funeral. We know that he is holding our mother's hand right now and guiding her on her journey to a better place. Our mother was the kindest, sweetest person anyone could ever meet. 
She will always make us laugh even in serious time. She always told us the truth even though we never wanted to hear it. And oh gosh, that woman could cuss. <laughs> you should ask Harry, Rashma, and Neil <laughs> for breaking her Benson and Hedges ashtray and then blaming it on our poor brother Sean. <laughs> Also, you could ask Nikki about the time when mommy was sleeping and she did the cut lash and chopped down her favorite plant that Auntie Shaman gave her. <laughs> she got level legs that day. <laughs> she was also a free-spirited woman. First dates nowadays is going to restaurants and eating fancy dinners. Compared to mommy and daddy first dates, going hunting for their dinner and then cooking it for themselves. <laughs> so, my mommy, she was always there for me. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Like every single time I get a free chance, I call her. When I wash in, I call her. Anything I do, I call her. I have nobody now to go to. She was always there. I don't know what we're going to do without you now. Morning. I am Nandini, aka Nikki, also known as the next favorite daughter. <laughs> no matter what time of the day or night, she was always ready to cook something for us. Although she was always want to be in the kitchen, she always asked Harry to make her coffee, even though she used to make fun of it, aka can of water. <laughs> Not and not forgetting for her fun memories with Harry and her pizza nights together. She was also a scientist in the kitchen, experimenting with different types of foods. Like one night, she told me that she was eating peanut butter and butter. <laughs> Pure butter with normal butter, blue and butter. <laughs> yeah. I remember one day, she was teaching Aidan, which is Naveen, my son, to make aloo pie, and he made a whole mess in the kitchen. I know what she said. That's okay, he's just a child. Good morning. I am Omega, the third daughter. She would always pick up her grandchildren and her son in law. She would always say, What if I live with the child for? Leave the child alone. Don't be the child. Come, Mama, come, Papa. Don't talk about her son in law. She would always say, don't carry with the boy, leave the boy alone. We could have never hide anything from her. She always know everything before we even tell she. Like the night I went to meet my boyfriend Chris in Hangers with my sister Nikki, Rishma, Anil and Vaughn. <laughs> My name is Krishma. I am one of Jamie's niece, who she considered as her daughter. Since my mom passed in 2013, she has always been a mother figure to me. Continuing from the media, you know she wouldn't have told us them things, right? When we do anything, was level like some cause. <laughs> she would tell Uncle Bobby, "You see your children? I could." I could cut the tail. And he would reply, yes, walk their socks. <laughs> In closing, after all that lexan cuss with her famous alupi and plori, she was always there for us. Our shoulder to cry on. And on behalf of my sister Shivani, who is a little shy, to my fun, loving, crazy aunt. Thank you for taking care of me especially in my secondary school days. We were always so close. You treated me and Krishma like your own, and I watched you did the same with our kids. My boys will truly miss your, their Auntie Jamie. You were our rock. Even though someone asked for anything, you were always willing to give without a second thought. 
And even though you're in a better place now with your son, sister, parents, we all will miss you daily. Phone calls. Sleeping eternal peace. Mommy and soon we meet again. Hello everybody. My name is Sasha. I'm Jamie Last Sister. Um, I would like to show Jamie in a different light. For the week, I know we had fun talking about fun memories and stuff. But as a sister, I would like to show all your different side of Jamie. My sister Jamie can be described as an eccentric and remarkable woman. She got married at a tender age and started her journey by fulfilling her purpose on this earth. She was a loving mother, grandmother, dedicated wife, sister, auntie, and friend. Jamie definitely is one of those souls to walk this earth and touch many lives. From creating a home of warmth, love, and care, to making countless friends anywhere she went. Her personality was really dynamic. She was the type of woman to give advice, yet tell you the truth. She would give warm love and tough love. But it was only because she cared and wanted the best to everyone. Her strength and independence was uncanny, ensuring that everyone was well taken care of. From all the nieces and nephews and even her sisters, she treated us like a mother. Jamie was like our mother. From a wonderful cook to interior decorator to a hard-working woman, she balanced it all. To my dearest sister, we love you unconditionally. You live your life, Jamie. You, the bravest soul. I wish you a fulfilling journey. Until we meet again, be brave, be strong, be you. Leave another legacy. We love you. Come on, let's put our hands together today. Think about his love. Think about his love. Think about his love. in time if we have any family member or neighbor or friend anyone who would like to give a comment you know Jamie personally and you all share uh, time together and you just like to say something on the behalf you like to make a comment uh, now's the time yes feel free to come forward yes and make a statement come on give a good hand give a good hand Jimmy was a sweet, caring, loving, fun and happy person to all. She sucked us and she sucked everyone she knew and knew. She was always... She was always... Nah, I'm a mistake, babe. <laughs> she made 
Amen, amen, amen. It's, 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 it's not easy. I, I, she's so correct. We, anybody else would like to make a comment? I know you don't have to be afraid. Eh? It's family and friends here, so you don't have to be afraid. You want to make a comment? Please feel free to come. Yes. Yes, you're going to have to come on give a hand clap today. A pleasure. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heartfelt condolences go out to my loved ones, the Kimaraj, the Gobu family, and everyone that is connected to our dearly beloved. I will try to sing a song for... I have lived a life of sin in this world I'm living in. I have done forbidden things I shouldn't do. I asked a beggar along the way if he could tell me where to stay, where I can find real happiness and love that's true. Across the bridge, there's no more sorrow. Across the bridge, there's no more pain. The sun will shine across the river. And I'll never be unhappy again. Follow the footsteps of the skin till you hear the voices ring. They'll be singing all the glories of the land. The sound of trumpets you will hear, by the rolling hair. And behold the most precious face ever known to man. Across the brain, there's no more sorrow. Across the brain, there's no more peace. The sun will shine across the river, and you'll never be unhappy again. From this valley, they say you are going. We will miss your bright eyes as we climb. For they say you will in the sunshine that will brighten the pathway of life come on let's give a hand clap thank you so much for that wonderful song thank you so much yes let's just say something come on give a hand clap as she comes i want to encourage her as well it's, it's not easy to take the mic here you know. <laughs> praise the lord praise the lord praise good the lord good morning everyone yes good morning i don't know how to even start I know Jenny, yes, yes. She will be my sister enough for life. I have some fun, fun memories. And I was so happy I came the last time, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to talk today. It's a long while I didn't come. But Jenny, I would like it to know I love you all the time. You will always be in my heart. Say hi to Sean. Yes, 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 yes. Praise the Lord. All right, just in case we have anybody, one more. We will take one more. I'm not forcing anybody, but just in case, I don't want to leave anybody out. You want to make a statement, now is the time. You're not going to get back today. This is it. The cameras are rolling. The time is, the clock is ticking. And if you would like to make a comment or a statement, please feel free to come now. Don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid. Everybody here, we family and friends, we love each other. Do not be afraid. Anybody want to make a comment? Yes. 
Jesus. Give her a hand clap as she comes. Good morning, everyone. I know I haven't been up here that much, but the days I'm coming up here with my aunt, I enjoyed it. Father's Day, last year we came up here, we made barbecue with this. To be honest, I was a drinker, but the only person who could have made me drink what I took was my aunt. <laughs> that day we enjoyed, we served, we did, me and Nikki, we were all game because of aunt, as you cheer, we all now, we gone. And see, all I just have to say, I will always lose and it will always be in my heart. Right? Does everybody say she was a cuss, but every time she called mommy, I'll be like, mommy, I'll be like, I'll tell you, mommy, please, the man, I'll love a cuss. <laughs> We're doing the child. Leave my child alone. And I will mess. I'll have nobody here to pick up from my auntie. And I think I'll mess up. Yes, let's give a good hand clap. Today, I just, I just want to sing one final song and then we get into the sharing of the word again. I want to say condolences to her husband, to her children, and to all the family. I know sometimes families are so closely knit together that sometimes even the neighbors come like family, you know. So everybody who's connected and hurting right now, condolences to you. And uh, we know that, you know, God is, God is going to keep you all. I don't believe that we are here by luck and chance. Uh, she called me to do the service for her, her son, Sean. Myself and Benjamin came the last time and we are both here again today. And uh, I know that God has a plan, he has a program. So many times we build our barriers because of religion and so on. And uh, I, I will talk about that in a little while because the devil is a trickster. On judgment day, when we all stand before God, the name of religion would not even be mentioned. You know, in the news at seven o'clock, there are things that happen in the country that never make the news. And then there are significant things that make the headlines. On Judgment Day, no religion, my religion, no religion would even be mentioned. That's how insignificant it is. I want to say today that Jesus bled and died on the cross. And if you would only call on the name of the Lord as a preacher, I would, I would laugh when I hear them say how she cursed so much and so on. And when I say that she's gone to be with the Lord, you say, well, how that pastor says she's gone with the Lord and she cost so much? She's a customer there. She cost so much and she, she's an uh, experienced uh, cursor, if that's a word. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The Bible did not leave it a chance. Jesus was crucified between two thieves. And Jesus said before the whole world, just for asking today you would be with me in paradise. When Jesus came, he said boldly, I did not come to call righteous. And there's none righteous, eh? self-righteous people. I did not call, come to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Jesus was a friend of sinners. One time they wanted to stone a woman to death. She was taken in the act of adultery. They didn't hear about it, you know. These, these religious men know the woman, so they sent her in all night waiting for her. And the Bible says they caught her in the act of adultery. And when they brought her, Master, Moses in the law said such a be stoned to death. But what say you? Because they wanted to show Jesus that Moses was a holy man, a man of God, everybody knew that. And you are an imposter because you're breaking Moses' law. Jesus looked at the religious hypocrites. He said, anyone of you without sin, cast the first stone. And everybody from the, from the leaders, the elders, started to drop the stone. Put up your knee and stone, drop it on the ground. And everybody turned and walked out one by one, starting with the leaders. So I am not moved. By the lifestyle of somebody. We got bandits in heaven right now. Because they, 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 once you come to Jesus, you change. Once you confess Jesus, that's it. Your sins are washed away. A lot of people don't understand the power of the blood. You know? The power of the blood. There is power in the blood. And you could be a car thief. You could be a faulty. Whatever it is. You can make heaven your home by just asking Jesus to receive you. And this dear lady called me up and asked us to come. I didn't come as a DJ, a disc jockey. I didn't come like Larry Joseph to give jokes. I didn't come to lime and to drink the punch or whatever it is that people drink now. We came with the word of the Lord because she asked for the word of the Lord. Amen. And I am saying today with confidence, no man can make heaven their home by doing good things. But every sinner can make heaven their home by just saying, Lord Jesus, forgive me and wash me from my sins. So today I want to I wanna submit to you that we weep and we mourn and we sorrow, but there is a hope. Because one day, if you do the right thing, 
by calling on Jesus, you would meet with her again. Sean is rejoicing. They're doing cartwheels in heaven right now. The streets are paved with gold and there's no doctors and there's no surgeries up there. There are no ambulances up there. They are just having a real fun time reuniting right now in Jesus' name. Amen? Just going to sing a song and get into the room. Where she is right now, there's no pain, no sorrow. She's saying goodbye to her pain, goodbye to her sorrow. As long as you're alive in this earth, there will be sorrow. There will be disappointment. There will be pains and hurts. Some people here right now today, you look real cute and nice, but you're hurting. There are things in your life, apart from even Jamie's passing, there are things that offend, things that hurt, and we, we, we put up a brave smile and walk the road, but we are hurting on the inside. Jamie have no such thing to deal with again. She has gone to be with the Lord. Amen? Jehovah, you are just in you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, for a short while, we just want to get into the sharing of the word. And today I'm reading from the book of Romans, chapter 10. Romans, chapter 10, and verse 3. The Bible says, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. This verse of scripture today is a verse of scripture that tells us in the realm of the spirit where we have all different, a whole kaleidoscope of religion. Right here in this little twin island republic today of Trinidad and Tobago, you go to, you drive the streets, you walk the streets and you see all different kinds of, of symbols around people's houses. You see all different kinds of churches and temples. And if you go into all of them, their worship is different, their experience is different, their teaching is different. And I'm saying today, that is where we live in the realm of the earth. Every man is trying to reach God in his own way. Some people are in a church and they, they're satisfied with what they're experiencing and they go into another church and say, I now find the truth. And then one person's in the church where they say they find the truth, leave that place and go in another place and say, I find the truth. So sometimes you go into the church house 
and people have bad experiences in churches. They can't hear the preaching, the teaching, nothing because somebody offended them as they walk in the door. So they go into the church house and they offended, they leave and never come back. And then somebody would go into that same church and be so happy they never want to leave. I am saying religion is like a seesaw, up and down, spinning around. But listen to what the Bible says. They're being ignorant. And the word ignorant, when we were small growing up, and they say, boy, that's an ignorant man, boy. It means that run from him. He will beat you without a second thought. An ignorant man is a man that loves to fight. And as I grow up and I begin to understand, the word ignorant simply means something you know nothing about. It means that you do not know what we are speaking about. Then you are ignorant concerning that subject matter. The Bible says, they're being ignorant of God's righteousness. Please take note, not a religion, not a church. They have been ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. They have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. I want to talk for a short while today on the subject God's righteousness. The Bible says clearly that there is not a, a just another religion side by side with the rest. This that the Bible is speaking about is a brand of righteousness that comes directly from God himself. The Bible talks about God's righteousness. It is not the, this brand of church or that group of, no, no, no. The righteousness of God. And if the Bible is the word of God and the Bible is the truth, beloved, that tells us with crystal clarity that the righteousness of God is upon the earth. The righteousness of God is among us. And we have so many people that are ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. They have not submitted themselves or given themselves unto the righteousness of God. And that's a sad pair of shoes to be in today. God is trying to reach us before it is too late. Nobody knows when we're going to say goodbye. Nobody knows when we're going to die. That is why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't ever put it off for tomorrow. When you hear the word of God and you hear the voice of God and you know that God spoke to your heart by his word. Somebody's talking but it's, it's registering in your heart, registering in your spirit as if you know God is talking to you. I am saying do not harden your heart. Do not resist the word and the voice of God because the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. When I got the call that Jamie had passed away, I couldn't believe it. We were here, you know, the time is flying so quickly. We were here not long ago. And here it is, if somebody told me that Jamie would be, we, we would be coming back so soon for a funeral, I would say you've got to be crazy. You've got to be mad. But beloved, we are here. And I'm saying to every one of us, Tomorrow is promised to none of us. Amen. The righteousness of God is in the person of Jesus Christ. That's the first thing I want to say. We have so many different people argue. You worship on Saturday. I worship on Sunday. No, I worship on Wednesday. And there's a big argument. Wednesday is the right day. Saturday is the right day. Sunday is the right day. Sunday is the mark of the beast. You should need pork. You should need ham. You should need green bananas. And we got the list goes on. I am saying to every one of us today, Jesus did not come to establish a new religion. When Jesus came, he met the scribes and the Pharisees, the Essenes, he met a lot of religious people. But when Jesus came, beloved, these people, thank you very much. When Jesus came, these people, they look for faults with him. They tried to find faults with Jesus. They were picking arguments with him. They wanted to catch Jesus in some form of error to prove that they were right and that he was wrong. They told Jesus one time, they said, we are Abraham's seed. We are not born of fornication. And they started to rate up themselves. We are Abraham's seed. We are not born of fornication. And Jesus looked at them and said, you are of your father, the devil. Jesus was not easy preacher, you know. You know, we have preachers today only giving out cotton candy. Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus tell it like it is. If you are the son of the devil or the child of the devil, Jesus will tell you that. He's not condemning you. He just wants you to know you're in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing, and you could get it right. The gospel is never about condemnation. There is always a mirror showing you yourself. Talk about fornication, you show up. Talk about adultery, you see yourself. Talk about rum, bond to drunk, an alcoholic, you know the Bible talking about you. Talking about a thief, a car thief, young men thief in cars, you know the Bible talking about you. Talking 
talking about the rapists, talking about the criminals, the drug lords, and the gun pushers. Those are, from the time you, you listed, they know, okay, they're talking to me now. And at the end of it all, it's never condemnation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God always wants us to know that we could live a better life. We could live a higher life. We could live a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. We do not have to live all our life in sin and go to hell. You know, sometimes a woman is a prostitute and everybody in the community talks, like that, 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 that a prostitute? And they use another word that you, people use to clean the yard. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And they, 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 they do, they scorn that person. The truth is that we were all born in sin and we are all shaping in iniquity. The truth is that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't care how clean you look and how beautiful and how educated you are and you drive the best car and live in the best house. No, that, that, that does not add up in spiritual things. Jesus said a man's life consisted not in the abundance of material possession. That has nothing to do with being spiritual. And I'm saying to every one of us, we are all contaminated by sin nobody has a right to look down on anybody else because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God so I'm saying to every one of us today the righteousness of God that we are talking about it's not in a religion it is in the person of Jesus Christ and if you today hear the word of God and invite Jesus to come in, the, the beautiful thing about God, he doesn't open at 8 in the morning and close at 4 in the evening. If you're in pain and sorrow, 2 in the morning, you could call on Jesus. Beloved, you may not be able to call your friends because they're sleeping, and if you wake them up, they might get angry. But I'm saying you could call on Jesus 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, whatever time you're under pressure, you could call on the name of Jesus. And if you would call on the name of Jesus today, you leave this place and you call on Jesus home, he's in your house. You call upon him in your car, he's in your car. You call upon him as you walk the street, he is there. In other words, beloved, I am saying the person of Jesus, he carries the righteousness of God. I don't care where you've been and what you've done. I tell people, I, when I, my, my teeth in career last one night, I went up to uh, Tobago with some friends. Uh, the YMCA and we were close to Crown Point Airport where the planes were landing and they wanted to cook and they wanted to thief some fowl and they sent out all the fowl thieves and I'm in the batch I never thief a fowl in my life but I'm there friends lead you but they don't bring you back and the fowl is right there I'm under the black sage trees there and the fowl perch all over the tree and the thing is in my hand just to close my fingers and I can't do it and I realized that that ain't for me Thiefing people think it's not for me. I, I, I tried for about five minutes, ten minutes, and my hand just, the, the, the fowl is not retaliating, the fowl is not moving, the fowl is not even aware that my hand is right an inch from holding his foot. And just to close it, and I couldn't do it. And I don't know how people could steal other people's things. I don't know how you could break in a house and hurt a family. I don't know how you could thief a car and drive away happy and somebody's crying. I don't know. I, I'm saying, beloved, I could not even thief a fowl. If you tell me thief a feather from the fowl, I can't take the feather. Of course, I was not a preacher yet. Eh? I was a normal young person. But I couldn't do it. My mom brought me up in such a way that I never, we never could steal. We never thought about, not even thought, of, think about raping somebody. Think about breaking a house. No, no, no. We would play cricket and football and go on the beach and go in the river and catch crab. But thieving and criminality, that's not for us. I am saying today, but even then, we still all had a sin problem. And I want to say to every person here today, now put on your seatbelt. I'm going to go kind of fast. I want to finish. I don't want to keep you too long. Number one, if you would come to Jesus, number one, Jesus, the righteousness of God. Beloved, the first thing, the plan of God for your life is in Jesus. So many people get up one morning frustrated and say, Lord, why you have me here? What, what is my, why you bring me under what to do? You want to know what to do? You want to know the will of God? When you receive the person of Jesus Christ, the will of God comes into your heart with the person of Jesus Christ. Trust me today. Beloved, so many people live in the bars and they live till 80 and 90 and die and they are lost. And I'm saying you could live your whole life however, however you choose. One man sang a song. He said, I did it my way. That's the worst way. Do it God's way. And I'm saying to every one of us, 
Beloved, if you would only receive Jesus, the plan of God would enter into your life. You can be 60 years, you're not too old, enter the plan of God. You could be 70 years, enter the plan of God. You could be 12 years old today as a child, and you want the plan of God? Receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And when he comes in, first thing he does, he is able to save us from all our sins. John the Baptist walking on the banks of the Jordan River and Jesus was passing by. His hair blowing in the wind, his clothes blowing. And he pointed to the people and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Not the sin of a family, not the sin of a person, not the sin of a nation. The sin of the whole world is dealt with on the cross in the blood of Jesus Christ. So I'm saying to every one of us today, beloved, you know that you did wrong. You lie. You cheat. Some people, they wake up in a bed that is not their own. They wake up with a woman that's not their wife. You wake up with a man that's not your husband. We got people that are so corrupt today. Man want to be with man and woman want to be with woman. All the different kinds of sins, all the abominations in the sight of God. If you would only come to Jesus, all your sins will be washed away and forgotten. And God does not remember it. You know some men have a wife and she say, you remember what you did? And she telling you it was the day, it was the hour, it was the time. We were around the table, it was all years night, all the family were there. And you started. And she will tell you ball by ball commentary, it's record the woman, don't forget, you know. They ain't telling you nothing yet. You stop there and feel they forget. They don't forget. They don't need to write it in a black book nowhere. They don't forget. And I'm saying, beloved, that women will remember what you did. I remember we went to one night in the area of Kumuto. There was a big function and man, the husband and wife find no better time but to fight that night. So the, the woman's, the, the woman uh, is there and she want to beat her husband and the husband gets so mad. He tell everybody, he just get out and say, get out of my house. People can believe their ears, you know. They invited. There's food and drink and family and friends, a big occasion. Get out my house now! And everybody started to grab their little bag and their little purse and their little children and walking out. So the mother, the mother, his mother in law stand up, she know, he, she, you know, he respect her all his life. He can't be talking to her, he's talking to, to the people. He turned directly to her. He said, I said, get out my house now! Mother in law had to walk out to you, you know. The point I'm making is you don't forget events like that. I came to say, beloved, that from the time something happened two years down the road, she said, you see the same thing, you start again, the last time when they put on everybody, and they remember everything. I came to tell you, when God forgives you, he does not remember it anymore. Beloved, if God forgives you, if the blood of Jesus pass upon you, you will be whiter than snow, and you will have freedom to fellowship with God. I don't care where you've been and what you've done, you will get a total cleansing in the blood of Jesus. People that live in the country know what I'm talking about. When fixed in on your clothes, fixed in on your pants and on your shirt, it ain't coming out. But beloved, there are people that say, put it in the sun. Throw some salt. Throw some vinegar. Throw some of this. Throw some of that. And you, you, when you catch back that thing, you realize that it's brand new again. The stain is gone. The blood of Jesus has an amazing ability to wash us from every evil, every wrongdoing, and make us ready for heaven today. So the first thing the righteousness of God does it is able to save us from our sin. You know, people remember you. That's not a bounce of drunk man who always dragging on the road. That's not the man who always in the bar drinking at 8 o'clock in the morning and never going home. And when you get saved and you start going to church, they say, who, the drunkard? They will label you the drunkard, but in the eyes of God, you are a child of the Most High God. God receives us. He washes us, cleanses us, and receives us. So the first thing today, it is able to take care of our sins. Secondly, it's able to keep us in the way. I remember when they first told me about Jesus, I said, I can't do that. Man, you, 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 got, you got carnival, you, you got big, big bands revving up in Port of Spain and the iron, the iron knocking on people, the trumpeters trumpeting and the traps are beating and women jumping and young people going crazy. And you want me to go and sit down in a church? I can't do that. I actually thought, how could I follow this list? Don't eat this, don't drink that, don't watch people, don't talk to them, don't do that. I, too much, too much to keep. 
I never knew that I don't have to really do it on my own. Jesus is with me every step of the way. I don't want to say to you today, beloved, you may not understand. Sometimes you look at a Christian and you realize they're living a tough life. They're living a rough life. They may not know how all their needs matter. They may be struggling to do certain things. I came to tell you, beloved, that the Christians have something that some people know nothing about. We have somebody that called, that's called a burden bearer. The Bible says when it gets heavy, when it gets rough, cast your cares, cast your burdens upon the Lord and he will carry your burdens and you will rejoice. I'm here to say today that if you give your life to Jesus today, you will never ever be alone. In the roughest day of your life, he will stand by your side. He will hold your hand. He will fight your battles. He will give you victory in every circumstance. Yes, it gets rough. Yes, you may even shed tears. But Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you until the end of the age. Do not be afraid. If you give your life to Christ today, you're never alone. When you're in some dead religion somewhere, you're really on your own. You call some people, they put on the phone on you. Some people say, I'm busy, I'll talk to you later. Bang! That's it. You have no help. Sometimes they try. You got people that may want to help, but they can't help. But God, beloved, is a miracle worker. And if God is in your house, in your life, in your problem, you got the best help that you can ever get as a human being. Thirdly and finally, it is able to take us from our sins. It is able to keep us in the way. And thirdly and finally, this righteousness of God is able to take us into heaven itself. There are people that say heaven and hell is right here. Oh, how ignorant they are. Some people say, if you're rich and live in a real big house, you're in heaven. I heard old talk like that. And if you're suffering and struggling, then you're in hell. Old talk. I got a friend, he told me personally, we were in school together. He had the biggest house in Mayaro in Mafeking area. When you pass, it was like it was like a museum from, from wall to wall. If you see this big, magnificent house, there was none like it in the area. People would slow down and watch the house and drive. People would walk by and they're amazed at the size of the house, the size of the house. But he spoke to me, he said, listen, man. He said, look at top of big house, you know. He said, we live in a big house and everybody, oh my God, these are rich people. These are, he said, every day of the year, including Christmas Day and birthday, wheat and bread and butter. People see the big house. They see the spread out of the house. They see the expensive house that we live in. And they think they must be eating lamb chops every day. They must be eating lamb, ham and jam. He said, bread and butter Christmas Day. Bread and butter on your birthday. Bread and butter all year's night. Don't get fooled. I know another guy, he's wealthy. Sometimes he's on papers. The government owing this guy money from time to time. They owe him and they gotta pay him for oil, 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 uh, oil uh, money and so on. And I went and worked with him a couple days and I got to some news and he told me. And, and listen, he is so wealthy. The man is driving the most expensive car that money could buy. And when he goes home, he has a daughter with scoliosis. Her spine is shaped in every direction. She's on a bed and all the money he has, he can't help her. He can't do nothing for her. That is not heaven. That's pain and sorrow. With all the money you have, you can't help your child. With all the money you have, you're lying late in the night. You don't want to come home because when you come home, your heart is heavy. Seeing your own flesh and blood lying on a bed and all the money that you have and people think that you're happy. It's pain and sorrow. Heaven is not here. Hell is not here. It, 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 it's... it's, it's ignorant talk. But the blood of Jesus and the righteousness of God is so amazing. The Bible tells me, beloved, that when we give our lives to Jesus, when we come to Jesus, when our sister Jamie gave her heart to Jesus, the blood of Jesus is so powerful that it washes her whiter than white, whiter than snow. And I'm saying to every one of us, beloved, we need to understand the Bible says to be absent from the body. Why am I walking in token because the spirit is in me if the spirit leaves me i'm just like her i'm dead the body without the spirit is dead when the spirit leaves the body the body is dead and i'm saying for the child of god to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord she has gone to be with the lord she has gone to be in a better place and beloved i dare you to defy the word of the lord nobody's wiser than god god says where were you when i laid the foundation of the earth where were you in the beginning when god stretched out the heavens like a curtain, like a woman would spread out a curtain. Where were you when God took 
Adam and formed him of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. None of us were there. We cannot give God advice. We cannot tell God what to do. And God says it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this comes the judgment. We will all have to stand before God. But thank God our sister did the right thing. She did the wise thing. She submitted herself to the righteousness of God. She gave her heart to Jesus, whom to know is life and peace. And today, 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 she is truly in a better place. People like to use that line, and I laugh, you know. I see, you see a big thief, and they say, well, in a better place. I was doing a funeral in Chagonas one day. I'm talking about a real thief, a real bandit. People afraid to come to the funeral. My back is to the road. The big gate is there, and my back is to the road. His body is in front of me, and the people there, and I'm preaching and teaching. And people are scared. Every passing car, they're not looking at me, no, they're looking at the cars because they're expecting them to spray some bullet. But, beloved, I, I go anywhere, anytime, because I know that my life is in the hand of God. In Him, we live and move and have our being. And you cannot touch our life or take our life until God says the time has come. So here it is. I went to, to do this funeral in, in, in the enterprise area in Gun City area in Lone Ranger territory and beloved I'm there preaching and, and, and sharing in that funeral and people are scared for their life I came to tell you beloved people still saying about the bandit and the murderer they gone to a better place I'm talking about crazy talk crazy talk you rape women, you steal, you kill, and you never give your life to Jesus. As a matter of fact, you want to pelt down the church and curse the preachers and hurt Christians. And you talk about going to a better place. What better place? There is no better place for murderer. There is no better place for bandit. There is no better place for rapist. If you give your life to Christ, God will cleanse you and bring you home. But as long as you die in your sins, hell will be your portion. And I'm saying to us today, this woman is a wise woman. This this woman made the right choice. This woman wanted the word of God. This woman wanted the righteousness of God. And I can say, therefore, that she has gone to meet with the Lord and she's in a better place. I'm going to close right here. I was up in Maracas Beach one day and we got the news that a young man that we know well had died. He went out swimming in the ocean. It was a public holiday. We were in Maracas. They were up in Rampanagas. And when I got the call that he was dead, the call went on and they told me, they said, while he was in difficulty in the ocean, fighting for his life, his best friend looked at him and saw him fighting and gasping and drinking water, going up and down and swirling with the current in the ocean. And the best friend dived in to, to save his friend. He's not going to watch his friend die and not do something about it. And when he dived in to save his friend, they both got into difficulty. And that night they had two wakes and they had two funerals because a best friend went in to save his best friend and could not help him. I came to say, beloved, that we would love, all of us would love to do something good for a loved one. All of us would love to help somebody in a difficult situation. But many, many times we love them so much and willing to do something for them, but we are unable to do it. Today I'm presenting unto you a savior that doesn't just desire, but he can do it. He can pull you out of your trouble. He can miraculously work it out. When you can't see a way, God will make away and I'm saying to every one of us tomorrow is not the day today is the day in this home going service for our sister today is the day Jesus is available the word of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord is in this place and as long as you open your heart to Jesus today is the day of salvation today is the day of salvation as a little boy my mom sent me down the road to do an errand and I saw something that I could never forget. A woman was crossing the road. And while she's crossing the road, a car is speeding with all the speed coming up the road. The car connected with the woman in the front bumper. Bang! And I looked up as I saw the woman going up to the electric wire. If you've never seen this, you may not believe it, but it is the truth. The man was driving so hard and so fast. And the impact on that woman's body was so great that she got hit and she went up. And when she fell back down, I don't want to get anybody upset, you know, but her head, like it cracked. 
and blood was everywhere. And I looked and said, oh my God, as a little boy, I saw it. I never forgot it. I'm saying that if that woman knew that she would get bounced by a car, she would stay in her house. Nothing is worth your life. She would leave the chicken, she would leave the butter, she would leave the margarine, she would leave the moby, she would leave the peas and the pigtail and the red pea, everything. Nothing is worth giving your life. She would stay at home. And there are those that die on the highway. There are those that die in the hospital. Those that go for surgery and die on the operating uh, table. None of us know the day or the hour that we are going to go. And that is why the word of God tells us when God's word goes forth, it's not for entertainment. He's calling somebody in this place. God is calling right now. And if you hear the voice of God and you know that if you die tonight, you're going to go to hell. You know that if you die tonight, you're not sure that you're ready for heaven. God is calling you today before it is too late. Bow your heads, everybody. Bow your heads. God is calling before it's too late. God is calling. I'm not going to ask you to move. You know, people say, come forward. No, I'm not going to ask you to move. I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand. This is between you and God. And as much as possible, close your eyes right where you are. No looking around. This is the moment between you and God, the God of heaven. Yes, he is here. Yes, he's taking record. And God is calling you, touching your heart. I'm not asking you to join my church. You, if you never come to my church to even visit, that is all right. We still love you. You don't have to come. That's not what I'm about. I am here today to tell you that God loves you wherever you are. Whatever you have done, God loves you. And in this home going service for our dear sister Jamie, Almighty God wants to reach you today before it is too late. And I want to lead you in a very simple prayer. Very simple prayer. Say it from your heart. God is going to see it. He's going to hear it. And he's going to touch your life. And you will never ever be the same again. Say these words. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Wash me from all my sins with your precious blood. I declare that you are my Lord, that you are my Savior, and I give you praise, and I give you thanks for hearing me, for saving me, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says when one person does that, angels in heaven begin to rejoice. Not for the World Cup, not for all these big World Cup and cricket and T20 angels. Listen, when a person says yes and they're washed in the blood, angels begin to rejoice in heaven. And there is rejoicing right now because somebody said yes to Jesus. There's rejoicing. Father, every person here today that said that prayer in sincerity, I lift them before your throne. And I'm praying, God, that you would just mantle them with your anointing. Lord God, that you would keep them. I pray that on the final day, these would stand in the place of the righteous after every trial and testing and temptation, after the good times and the bad times. On the final day, when all is said and done, cause these to stand in the place of the righteous. You are able to keep those that we commit unto you so we commit them into your hands and we proclaim blessings upon them in jesus name amen i'm going to ask the family to stand today we want to pray for the family before we close the service today the family please will you stand kim raji kim raj better known as jamie lovingly called jamie father we lift the family of Jamie today, those who are standing, we lift her husband and her children in a special way. We lift my God, sisters, brothers, cousins, all those that are connected by blood. You know every person here today. And we are praying, Lord God, that in this hour, in this hour, as they say their farewell and their goodbyes, that your presence would be rich and real. Lord, that you would strengthen them, give them courage, cause them in the midst of their tears, because yes, there will be tears. There is tears and tears will continue to flow. But in the midst of the tears and the sorrow, cause every heart to know and to understand, my God, that this is a victorious life. In the midst of the pain, there is, there is victory. In the midst of the sorrow and the tears, my God, she has gone in a better place. She has gone to be with you. And there's a great reunion with herself and her, and her son. I am thanking you, oh God, for the life that she lived. 
and that she called upon the Lord, that she always desired the word of the Lord. And Father, we proclaim the blessings of God and the peace of God upon this house and upon this family. Let it resonate in their hearts. She has gone to be with the Lord, and this is the house where she used to be. We bless this family, and we thank you for keeping them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Before we go to the do the final rites down at the Waterloo place, that's where we're going, right? All those who would like to get a quick view of the body, you, you need to come now. We want to look because I know everybody may not be able to go down to Waterloo. So all who would like to get a, a view of the body, please come now at this time. Come in an orderly fashion. That's the one line. You come in this way. You go back that way. And let us have a final view before we go down to Waterloo. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'll never be the same again, oh no. Since my life has changed, I am not the same. I'll never be the same again. He brought me out from the mud. My feet on a rock to stay. But I saw him, I saw I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away. I'm born again. Born and a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away. I'm born again. Born and a that's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. We 
All those, all, all those who are able to go make the trip to Waterloo, please, you're welcome to be there. And those, as we said a while ago, who cannot make the trip, you're unable to do so. You just can say your final goodbye here right now. All right. We are going to do the final rites down there. For all those who can make it, please feel free, free to, 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 to make the trip with us. Father, we commit this gathering today. We know that there will be a separation even now. Everybody will not be able to make it. But just cause your presence to go with us. Cause your blessings to go with us. You said, my God, dost thou out and unto dost thou shalt return. And as we take, my God, out the body of 